Um, I will begin the lecture. Uh, today's focus is on the case of Pakistan. As Willem introduced, it's part of the China's Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, this is part of my ongoing doctoral research that I'm conducting, uh, looking at the, the effect of China's Belt and Road on democratization and regime change. But I've made this lecture uh, on a more informative note uh, to discuss what CPEC is, what projects come under it, and how to understand uh, broader China-Pakistan relations within this context. Um, so I'll begin. Um, in this lecture today, I'll briefly uh, give the overview of the Belt and Road Initiative and then move on to um, uh, talking about CPAC, what institutional framework of CPAC is, what investment and projects come under it, how's the financing and sectoral distribution of the, pro uh, of the projects, and uh, the China-Pakistan relations before CPEC and after uh, CPEC period. And then I'll move on to discussing Gavada Port uh, with a specific focus. So what is Belt and Road Initiative? As most of you already know that it was launched in 2013 as One Belt, One Road Initiative by Chinese President Xi Jinping with an aim of uh, regional connectivity and economic cooperation through infrastructure investment and trade. So essentially reviving this ancient trade routes, which were known as Silk Road or Silk uh, Route uh, back in the second century. Um, so BRI comprises of two components, the belt, which consists of the overland road and rail transportation routes, and this is called the Silk Road Economic Belt, and the road component, which refers to the sea routes known as the 21st century maritime Silk Road. Um, and which countries come under BRI? Um, it's it's evolving project and it covers uh, many regions across continents within Asia, Africa, and the rest of the world. And as of January 2020, China has signed um, around 200 cooperation documents with 138 countries and 30 international organizations, according to the Belt and Road Portal of the Chinese government. And uh, there are six economic corridors within BRI. So China, Mongolia, Russia economic corridor, new Eurasia land bridge economic corridor, China, Central Asia, West Asia economic corridor, um, and China, Pakistan economic corridor is one of these six economic corridors. And this will be the uh, focus of the talk today. So I uh, wanted to display this map uh, because it gives a, a broad overview of how the projects are happening all over the regions, um, the showing different rail, railroads, oil pipelines, and gas pipelines. Um, this is uh, made by Merix, the Mercator Institute of China Studies, and it um, they track the progress of the projects as well. So it gives a, a high level overview of um, uh, the scope of the Belt and Road Initiative. So what is CPEC? Um, it is also launched in 2013 um, as corresponding to the Belt and Road time period uh, when China's Premier Li Keqiang visited Pakistan. And then later in 2015, when President Xi Jinping came to Pakistan, uh, a series of memorandums of understanding were signed with an initial investment of $46 billion, and which now stands at $62 billion um, as of 2017. Um, so CPEC is defined as a regional connectivity framework which spans over 3,000 kilometers of network of railways, roads, ports, um, pipelines, and highways, uh, which is connecting Kashgar in Xinjiang, China, down to the south of Pakistan in Karachi and Gavadar, through uh, southern coastal area cities in Pakistan via the Punjab Pass and several other nodal areas. And this map gives a little bit more idea of how the CPEC routes are. So we have Eastern alignment. This passes through the central Punjab and Sindh area. And then we have a central route, which goes from uh, Dera Ismail Khan and Dera Ghazi Khan down to Gavadar. And then we have a Western alignment touching the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province and in Balochistan, Quetta and down to Gavadar. And then the Northern route uh, is connecting basically all these three alignments. Um, to the Pakistan-China border, uh, Hunjarab, and then continues uh, to the Chinese territory in Kashgar. 
So talking about the institutional framework of CPEC, so it's basically coordinated between the two governments. Uh, on the Chinese side, we have National Development uh, and Reform Commission, NDRC. And then on the Pakistani side, we have Ministry of Planning, Development and Reform, uh, which is overseeing all the projects under CPEC. And then we have a joint cooperation committee, which is JCC, um, established uh, to oversee all the um, implementation of the projects, to have the inter-ministerial uh, ministerial coordination for CPEC projects. And we have eight uh, joint working groups within it. So planning, uh, transport, transport infrastructure, energy, Gavadar, security, industrial parks, and so on and so forth. Um, so what JCC does is that it holds regular sessions and it uh, consults with the ministries and it reviews the progress, discusses all the projects and the budgets and the implementation phases and then agree on how it should pro uh, proceed further. So the last JCC meeting was held in November 2019, and the 10th JCC meeting was supposed to happen this year, uh, but I think it has been uh, delayed due to the uh, COVID situation. And another uh, important institutional framework for CPEC is uh, the recent establishment of CPEC authority in Pakistan back in October 2019. Um, and it is currently chaired by Asim Salim Bajwa. And the goal of this is to have a more centralized uh, planning and uh, implementation uh, for the CPEC projects to ensure that it's uh, effective and it's actually uh, proceeding uh, according to the timelines. And um, also to find new drivers of growth, to, to look for interlinked production networks and global chains through regional and global connectivity. So moving on, uh, which CPEC investments and projects come under it? There are a lot of energy projects and I will talk about them in a bit. Um, I just wanted to highlight here that in 2017, we had long-term plan for CPEC, which was signed by both uh, countries. And that document provides a lot of detail uh, about the conceptual framework of CPEC, the guidelines, which are the key cooperation areas, what investment and financing mechanisms are for CPEC. And um, this plan was divided into three terms. So we had some projects which were with the targeted line uh, timeline of 2020, then we have 2025, and then the longer uh, version is until the 2030. So these are some of the crucial areas of cooperation and development highlighted there. So the focus has been on infrastructure development, uh, which involves um, roads, railways, bridges, highways, and ports, as I mentioned. Um, and then, um, so the goal is to have the connectivity in terms of trade, energy, and to develop these logistic hubs and flows. Um, and uh, this has been the focus of mostly phase one of the CPEC projects. And uh, moving on now that currently we are in phase two of CPEC projects, it's uh, more uh, diverse investment opportunities to, to establish industrial, financial, and agricultural cooperation between two countries. Um, and also to uh, focus more on socioeconomic development and uh, having people-to-people -people interaction um, and to have more harmonization in terms of uh, these objectives. So moving on to the financing and sectoral distribution of CPEC. So when it comes to CPEC, uh, it's uh, since it's an evolving project and the projects are uh, being reviewed and then implemented accordingly, uh, we have a total uh, amount of $62 billion dollars. But uh, it's important to note that this is not a lump sum payment made, rather it's, an, it's on the basis of project and how the allocation goes and how the projects are being implemented. So out of this $62 billion, uh, most of the projects have been commercial contracts for electricity generation um, due to Pakistan's peculiar situation. Um, so uh, this is um, a very good infographic. Uh, made by the CPEC, uh, uh, the opportunity consultancy firm in Islamabad. And uh, this 
kind of uh, elaborates a little bit on the division of how uh, the projects are allocated. So 65% is towards energy. And then 18% of the total projects uh, go to the infrastructure uh, uh, part. And then 15% we have railways and then 2% is Gavatar. Um, and when we talk about the investment, uh, so what is uh, a grant portion and how much is FDI? Um, uh, we have this study conducted by Rafiq. Um, I can share the link later as well. And according to him, uh, FDI constitutes 64% of the total investment, a Chinese investment in CPEC, and 24% are concessional loans. And 6% um, is commercial loans and 1% is grant. And I will uh, uh, elaborate a bit more on it uh, in a bit. Um, and until 2018, we had uh, around 18.9 billion uh, total amount um, of the initiated and completed CPEC projects. Out of those 20, uh, to 22 projects, 11 were completed and 11 are still uh, in the construction phase. But that is until 2018. So up until now, we have the amount uh, is around 29 billion. Um, but these are the figures provided by the Chinese embassy in Islamabad. Um, and I will show this um, chart and table, table here. Um, I am using this also for my research. So this kind of gives a little bit more idea of how the distribution of the projects are. Um, the infrastructure projects include, uh, you know, all these four uh, ones, KKH, which is now in the phase two, um, Peshawar Karachi Motorway, uh, Lahore Orange Line uh, project, and the optical fiber cable. And that makes it around five billion um, out of the total amount. And then, as you can see, most of the projects are in energy uh, area. We have solar uh, power plants and coal-fired power plants, um, and it's more hydropower and electricity generation oriented. And that constitutes around 12 billion uh, of the total uh, amount. And then we have interest fee loans, which is mostly Gavadar specific. And some of the Chinese grants also go to Gavadar. And uh, the last component is the uh, main line one, ML1, which has been uh, given a bit more importance now moving on to the phase two. Um, so I just wanted to display this because it gives a very good idea of how the uh, projects are. But the further details are also available on the CPEC website under the uh, Planning and Development Reform Commission of Pakistan. So now I will talk about uh, China-Pakistan relations. Um, th now that we know the context of CPEC and what project distribution is, um, over the years, China-Pakistan has uh, um, have enjoyed very good diplomatic relations. So in Urdu, we have this um, uh, slogan, which is Pak Chin Dosti. And then the friendship has been referred to as deeper than seas, higher than mountains, iron brothers, all weather friendship. And now with CPEC at its core, it's regarded as all weather strategic cooperative partnership. So... Um, now, if, if you look at it, Pakistan was the first country to recognize uh, PRC back in uh, 1950 uh, when uh, PRC was established in 1949. And then later on, the official diplomatic relations were established. Um, and then over the years and through, throughout the uh, 1960s and 80s, both countries developed military assistance, strategic alliance was formed, and economic cooperation um, started to occur. So here I'll talk a little bit more about how to understand China-Pakistan relations in a pre-CPEC phase. Um, and I'm using this uh, overview provided by uh, Filippo Boni's article. He talks about Sino-Pakistan uh, relations um, and he categorizes uh, the relations in these possible fa uh, five phases. And I also include some data from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of Pakistan. So just to walk you through uh, very briefly how to understand this. It's, it's a huge topic. So uh, I will just touch upon on some of the important uh, incidents occurred uh, between two countries. So phase one could be looked into when the um, Pakistan-China 
uh, actually established diplomatic relations in 1951. And then um, China, Pakistan agreed for the border agreements over Kashmir. And um, so, so according to Filippo Boni, um, the relationship of China, Pakistan has not always been linear because initially when Pakistan was um, uh, became independent in 1947 and over the first 10 years or so, China was more close to India while Pakistan adhered more to the US defense pacts, uh, CETO and CENTO. So, um, th so this has been uh, a very strategic um, in this way. And then if we look into the phase two, um, Pakistan was going through uh, two uh, conflicts with India. We had Indo-Pakistani War of 1965 and then uh, 1971. Uh, but Pakistan did establish military assistance with China in 66. Um, so um, Boney explains here that within this uh, phase from 1964 to 71, the driving factor behind China-Pakistan relations was mostly anti-India orientation of both countries at that time. Uh, and later in 1970, uh, Pakistan facilitated the first visit of the U.S. President Nixon to China, which paved way uh, for the first ever U.S.-China contact. So China does acknowledge that. Um, and now moving to the phase three, uh, Pakistan developed its nuclear program with Chinese support. So the strategic alliance was also formed and then the Karakoram Highway was constructed uh, with the uh, mountainous north part of Pakistan and connecting with the west uh, of China, which officially opened. And in the 1979, the economic cooperation began between two countries. Um, and moving on to now 80s until 99, uh, more military to military contacts increased between China and Pakistan. Um, and um, the contract also to develop and produce uh, JF-17 was signed. Um, and when we move to the phase five, we look into more um, trade uh, enhancement. So preferential trade agreement was signed. Uh, Premier uh, Ju visited also Pakistan, and it was 50 years of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Um, and then... Um, in 2006, Chinese President Hu Jintao visited Pakistan and then, of course, the free trade agreement uh, was signed. So this kind of provides a very high level overview of how to understand uh, the dynamics between um, China and Pakistan. Now I will move to a little bit when 2013 um, CPAC uh, was launched. So Pakistan awarded the contract for the construction and operation of Gavada port to China and Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif uh, visited China and then the both sides agree, uh, agreed to common uh, vision for deepening China-Pakistan uh, cooperative partnership. And in 2014, uh, the Orange Metro Line project started in Lahore already. So this is one of the infrastructure projects um, that I talked about before. Um, and then uh, moving on to 2015, the historic visit of Xi Jinping to Pakistan uh, happened. And then both countries officially um, signed uh, more than 50 agreements outlining CPEC projects and um, the details about the investment and how uh, the implementation uh, will proceed. Um, 2015 was also the year where uh, two countries established um, trade, uh, so friendly exchanges in terms of trade, and that trade reaches $16 billion. Uh, in 2016, we had the 65 uh, years of diplomatic relations. Uh, now moving on to 2017 and 18, um, a lot of state uh, visits happened throughout this time frame until now. Um, and uh, if you look at the official visits before CPEC, um, the number has relatively increased uh, post CPEC phase. So in 2017, uh, and the Prime Minister uh, back then uh, visited Belt and Road Forum in Beijing. Um, in 2018, we had a change of government. So the new Prime Minister, which is the current Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, visited China and also attended the first China International Import Expo in Shanghai. And then in 2018, we also moved into the second phase of CPEC. Uh, moving on to 2019, um, 
second Belt and Road Forum happened and in 2019, uh, as I mentioned before, the CPEC authority was established uh, to monitor the CPEC projects and also a dedicated CPEC cell was established in the prime minister's office. Um, and uh, now in 2020, due to the coronavirus pandemic, both countries have reassured uh, uh, help and coordination uh, to each other. And uh, recently this MOU was signed to include uh, another joint working group on science and technology and agriculture cooperation. So this kind of sums up um, how the relations between China and Pakistan have proceeded uh, or evolved uh, after CPEC was launched. And um, also uh, both countries have enhanced more people to people uh, uh, interaction with each other. Uh, educational exchanges are happening. Many Pakistanis are studying in China under Chinese government scholarship um, and uh, people are uh, learning also Mandarin and vice versa. So uh, universities in China are also teaching Urdu. So there's a enhanced uh, people to people interaction uh, um, aspect of the relation as well. Now I will move on to the last aspect, uh, which is Gavadar port. Uh, Gavadar port uh, project has a very crucial uh, importance in CPAC uh, project and it is regarded as the flagship project. Um, and Gavadar uh, is one of the largest deep sea ports, which is situated on the Arabian Sea in Balochistan um, and um, right uh, across the Strait of Hormos. Um, so it does have a certain uh, geopolitical and strategic uh, importance attached to it. So currently, Gavada Port is owned by Gavada Port Authority uh, within Balochistan, but it is operated by the Chinese firm uh, China Overseas Port Hold uh, Holding Company. And previously, the port was also operated by the Port of Singapore, uh, Singapore Authority until 2006, um, I believe. And uh, so now the um, phase one of Gavada Port and other, the projects have been completed and it has moved to the second phase of construction. And these are some of the uh, projects under uh, the CPEC. So construction of East Bay Expressway, Park China Technical and Vocational Institute, Park China Friendship Hospital, and the building of new Gavada International Airport, and also the Gavada Smart Port City Master Plan. Another aspect within the Gavadar port uh, uh, projects is uh, also the development of Gavadar Free Zone, which will allow the tax exemptions for the uh, businesses and um, uh, trade, uh, trade purposes and also to enhance financial cooperation between free trade uh, zones, FTZs, and explore RMB offshore financial business and Gavadar Free Zone. So um, I will stop here and um, thank you very much for listening and I'll be happy to take questions.